Um, shout out to the to the American guys coming to step in. Shout out to Dubai guys shout finding out to those the girls freaky out. Niggas. I'm not shouting out to no Dubai porter. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking disaster. No, keep man. going, keep going, keep going. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to shout out to the Dubai. <laughs> King. Fam, that's where everyone else ends the night. Everyone's the night, boy. Yeah, everyone ends up Bagel King. Pick a couple of little warm, warm custard, and you pick up your ba- your bagel, the jerk chicken, warm plantain, custard. and cheese. Is that what you were getting from Bagel King? No, no, no. Before the warm custard, so yeah. That's, that's an abomination, fam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, slow, slow down. No, no you're not gonna custard warm custard, no, you know? No, no, no. What's going on? Custard here? and crumble. Custard and crumble. Aye, right, from Bagel King. You oh, never right. had that. No, be. I had the jerk chicken, yeah, avocado, the jerk chicken. and plantain bagel. I would cheese in it. You didn't have the cheese in it? I don't know if I never had the cheese in it. No. But that, that was, I used to run that. Maybe some sauce and... Yeah, uh, I'm and that warm bagel. No, that, that, yeah. Sometimes it bangs. But obviously after a while, yeah, you realise we're eating shit, fam. Yeah. And I stopped eating it. But Bagel King bangs after night out. Yeah. And then, yeah, just... Obviously, Pitch is a new spot right now. People are going to Pitch, but... What, Pitch Sundays? Yeah, but it's not... It used to be Pitch Sundays, but different activities now. Yeah, because that... To be honest, I, I watched a video and I looked at the quality of people. I was like, I'm not going to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I look at the quality of it. I was like, I'm not trying to be there when I go back. Let me tell you so. something. Yeah, you see London, fantastic, mm. great place. It's made us who we are, whatever, all that. But it's the same old shit over and over again. Yeah. Then pitch Sundays. All they've they line up benches and you just get drinks and talk to the same old. Like, I'm not gonna talk races. bad about pitch because my boy runs that event. So but we talk about something else. Okay, but... fine. Let's talk about the Sunday, the typical mm. Sunday motives. Yeah, in general mm. that happen. Lux. The brunch it. Okay. Did you go to Lux? I, I actually liked Lux. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't go every Sunday. Like yeah, I would yeah. go like maybe like after party for the birthday. You know, okay, like cool, you know, yeah. like day after the birthday mm. or or something or the occasional time. I just think when your brain likes stimulation, you don't want to see the same faces all the time. Yeah, for real. And you know those those events, it's the same kind of people all the time. And you know what I think about London? I think these uncles are taking over. Really? Yeah, because oh, when hit I start, me up. When well, I like the whole my... um, what's that club they love to go to? Lounge, LA Lounge. Oh my god, that you see that place is the bomb. <laughs> that place is the definition of an abomination. And then also, that used to piss me off. Coco Cure. You know, my Coco friends. Cure. Every time my friends wanted to do their birthdays, I would beg them. I'd be like, please, can and we go somewhere else? That's literally Lagos. I know boy. it's your birthday, but can we just do this every, birthday? Every else? Nigerian loves Coco Cure. I don't know. They just feel at like home in that place. Boy, you see them. You see uncles. Yeah, I think because when I look at some of my girls. Yeah, and then I go to their birthdays. Mm. Half the group is couple, couple, couple uncles. Like, in there? The group, yeah. Nice. Yeah, because I think, you know, Nigerians have money. money. Mm. Exactly. And the girls need money. The girls need money. They want to be around guys that have money. Because mm. I think London girls, yeah, they're just like, they're getting peppered over Instagram. You I'm know, sorry, over man. UK man being stingy and all that. Yeah, so, finished, boy. Nigerian men. Sh- shout out to Nigerian men taking over. Shout out to American guys. Shout out to Nigerian in. men. <laughs> Say yes to Nigerian men. Soon shout I'll out have to the, the t-shirt for you guys. <laughs> yeah, t-shirt out real soon though. Very soon. Um, shout out to the to the American guys coming to step in. Shout out to Dubai guys. Shout out to those freaky out. niggas. I'm not shouting out to no Dubai porter. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fucking disaster, no, keep man. Going, keep going, keep going, keep yeah. going. Yeah. Shout, shout out to the Dubai guys <laughs> flying people out, right? Now, the, now shout out to the silent, the silent man in London making money flying people uh, to those Bali. Are my, those ones, yeah, the I like silent, them ones. You know what I'm saying? The silent yeah, man yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to them, man, because them man, you lot doing your thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Nigerian brothers, shout out to them, man, but you don't need to be a bit more what less. About, what about yeah, the other ones? What the ones? Ghanaians, what about them, man? Do they get any love? You know what? Zim, I, Uganda. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? I'm, African. I'm not even trying to no, shout out to them man too but I've never seen them man do move do, weight so just making yeah. noise you understand yeah so like obviously like you might be able to you might know a bit more but like obviously I know there's some silent man them in those I areas don't know I don't know anything you don't know anything yeah mm. so <laughs> 
So anyway, I don't, I don't know there's some silent man them doing work in those areas, but on a I level, mean, Ghana, a couple of Ghana, some of my, some of my, some of my Ghanaian guys are are, are doing well. They're mm. doing okay, but I just think it's just the London society. Yeah, pounds is hard to come by, and the cost of living is high. So yeah, yeah, they, no, no. they haven't got the ability. If they work in a corporate job. They still don't have the ability to sponsor like mm. over fifty percent of a girl's lifestyle the mm. way that Miami babes or LA babes mm. or Nigerian girls would want you to. Shout out to Essex guys though, they did their thing. Yeah, I never went all the way that far. Really? Man. Yeah, they did their thing. So I know that there's a couple of man them I raised a new spot in Essex that people And they're are going not whitewashed to. over there. I don't know. Um, yeah, think... there's a bit there's a bit of it's a snow bunny situation. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but shout out to the shout out to man that loves to the snow Dr. <laughs> Shout out to Dr. Eva, Dr. Khalid Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> hey, Uma Johnson, oh, my, my, my guy. That guy, that guy actually brought Runa as well. You know boy. what's so mad, yeah? When I, was, when I was in uni, I was watching the videos. That guy actually took some sense into my head, you know? No, no. Because I was losing it for a bit. And then when he just came out wearing the native, was yeah, being yeah, American, yeah. very proper yeah, yeah, black, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you know what? Nigga, so that's the really... so that's the thing, right? So mm. I agree, but then some there's a rumor going around. I don't know if it's true. I probably doubt it. But they're like, he, he wants no bunny before traumatized him, and that's why he started preaching. That... <laughs> <laughs> nah, but but you know what? You know what? Yeah, not gonna lie to you. That situation is serious because I see a lot of man, a lot of my black brothers are are, are lost in the source. Fam, the girls too, though. Like really? the girls too. In fact. I was on Instagram scrolling last night. I came across this page called Swell Dating. Yeah. <laughs> was what was it called? Swell Dating. Swell Dating. <laughs> what is that? I was wondering the same thing. But it's a community of people, black people that want to marry white people. Like both, and most of the pages, black females who have white men. Man. Yeah. And then in the comments. So wait, yeah. the, the, the sisters are now going the other way. Fam. They're That's... like, the 90% of the page was with black women with white men. Listen, I'm, you know what's so mad yeah like i'm up i'm up for that stuff like at the end of the day if you're getting treated right but don't come on some there's always some underlying racism that's in there right i think there's always underlying agenda agenda yeah, yeah, yeah sometimes it's not clear but from mm. looking at some of the god forgive me god lord forgive me mm. but from some of the photos it was just don't look good. let me just say like everybody on the page was underneath like a six out of ten Ah, <laughs> for both parties. Ah, so I think maybe that has something to do. With that. It has to be a settlement <laughs> thing, isn't it? No, because if you think about it, <laughs> if in your own race, mm. and if you're if you're extremely below attractive, mm. you're not. You might not be getting love from your own people. Oh shit! So if both of them can relate, mm. then it makes sense for them to kind of join together. Mm. Anyways, I mean, I saw something about um, there was a black lady who got married to a white guy, and she was always cheating on him. And the guy was freaking out on, on social media. Yeah, there's been, a, I mean, conversations between our scales, that comes up a lot. Really? They're, like, if They're we, not getting satisfied. It, it comes up a lot in the sense of, if I was with a white guy, I would cheat. Okay. That that's specific mm. phrase has been mentioned quite a lot. That's interesting. And yeah. it's not because maybe they didn't like the guy, it's just that when it's that a, kin comes through, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it's a different energy. It's hard to avoid. You know, you know, like when you walk in somewhere, you just smell like your that. favorite food, it, you're just getting cooking. And it's like, there's no way you can't take a piece. And that's why I just keep it simple, boy. Like, mm. no matter no matter what, I just I just, I just, just like to keep it vanilla and just stick to stick to the Eurobuzz because... Um, really? That's, you like Eurobuzz? Yeah, I think... So my opinion on this is like, I feel life is already hard. Mm. And I think I'm I'm not complex, but like a lot goes on in my head and, mm. and a lot goes on in what I'm trying to do in life. So I don't have time to be teaching someone my culture and vice versa. Okay, yeah. That I takes a lot of time and mm. effort. So that's why I can respect people that do it because that's draining, mm, mm, mm. you know? I'm, I want to teach you, oh yeah, when you, when you meet, uh, when you meet, yeah, you got the ballet mm. or this, this is the soup. This soup, I hang on. Mm -mm. It's so long. You just get it. Or you don't get that it. That struggles for some people. It's not. It's not mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get, I get. Listen, life is always hard as it is, man. Keep it simple. So for me, mm. in that area of life, I just prefer to keep it simple. Mm. It hasn't worked yet, but <laughs> 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 don't worry, you you be fine. You be no, fine. no, 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 no. I'm enjoying peace because. <laughs> 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 you'll be you'll be I'm, just a, fine. I'm exactly where i need to be right so now. I, I mean i mean what, what okay what's your thought on like inter-tribal dating obviously like you know tribalism is quite huge in nigeria mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and some people think okay like 
this tribe are this way and then they come marry this tribe or it's kind of when you pick it into the family there's always like an issue with that stuff like mm-hmm. what, what are your thoughts around okay, that? Okay so I was one of those children that was like um, raised to say don't look at other tribes mm. so I always tell anytime I meet Ibu guys I send her to Ibu men by the way but every time I meet Ibu guys I always be like look I was raised and it's the truth I was mm. raised I was told stay away from Ibu men they're very fetish with money they'll use their wife for money ritual this <laughs> is the stuff I got told <laughs> continuously stay away from this other tribe this sort of thing and then recently maybe like a few months ago I mm. asked some people within my family me, me and my cousin asked we're like okay well let's get down to it why do you not want us to be with Ibu men yeah, yeah. and then one of the things that was said was like okay if the man passes away then the family kind of like are vultures onto the wife yeah the, the wife on the, the property earnings. and things like that mm. i i don't think it affects our generation I, I think i think yeah the yoruba people come with a lot of stress as well you know really? if anything the most stress so that whole yeah. narrative i don't use it yeah don't even, yeah i don't know what you I think i mean because yeah. obviously like i'm interested in, in the yoruba tribe and kind of like being, yeah bringing that into my family mm-hmm. so what would you say is kind of like uh, um, expectations from a guy marrying into a Yoruba community? Hmm, that's a good question, boy. I, 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 but the one thing about Yoruba people of all the other tribes, I think um, we're not that similar. You know, mm. that's why we're the most likely to kind of dilute or or to if you if you look at. Um, people that marry outside they're more liberal you think it wasn't more liberal mm, yeah okay. our culture is very strong which mm. is why when we got taken to like brazil cuba and all these mm. places that they still speak yoruba all these hundred years mm. later but at the same time i think it's family dependent because mm. if i look at how we grew up in london and different how mm. everyone's family dynamic was it was very different you know what one thing i regret it was like not being able to tap into the nigerian community in london oh you didn't no i didn't I really did not. So basically, like, I'm trying to be as objective as possible, right? But, like, we were just not in that community. We had our own family community. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Our family come from, like, the heritage of some some situation. I can't explain too much. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we just kept to ourselves and we were quite big enough. Okay. So we just had our own thing and kept it like that. Yeah. But there was a whole Nigerian community around the area and other places. But ne- we never really tapped yeah, into You were in it. South, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, that's where everybody was in yeah. South. Yeah. So we just never tapped into the community. It's just like the mentality was different. We had a bit of kind of... Well, you was, it a class, right? was it a class thing? Classing was involved as well. But then, yeah. that doesn't mean that it wasn't good because like the higher you go, you want your, your community around you because they will help you grow further. You yeah, but if facts. It's only, if you just only have like your family, it's fine. Family is always good, right? But there's other things that you learn. That's what obviously kind of made me kind of move to Nigeria as well to get a better understanding of like what does it take to be like fully Nigerian? Mm. Do you understand? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good point because I grew up um, in Northwest, but my Northwest, like North London, like Edgeware, Stanmore sides. Mm. And whilst that was definitely not a black area, it was like a Jewish area. Mm. There were Nigerians there okay. and they formed their own community mm. up until you, today. Did you tap into that community though? 100%. Oh, that's sick. Like my uncle and, and, and um, yeah, they're very supportive. Mm. Like, in fact, recently even developing friendships with some of like, you know. Mm. That, that age group that's that good, have yeah. seen, seen me grow up and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. So hundred hundred percent. And I yeah. think one thing that played a big factor in it was not just being Nigerian, it was church. Mm, because church is free, yeah. in I, North, didn't, I didn't I didn't tap into church that is a, I was away from church. That's man. the thing. Because yeah. I went to like four different schools. Then I went to like two major churches in Northwest. Mm. By the time you look at my network, it's yeah, it's so yeah. large in mm. like our community. Yeah, um, so true. church makes a difference. Yeah, I've always thought, this is something about church. Yeah, I always thought like, I'm not gonna lie to you, but honestly speaking, I thought it was a money grab, you know? Okay. So I, because of that, it never really made me tap into it. Do you understand? I, I, I just saw it for what it was. But I didn't look at it from a community perspective, which is also very good. To me, yeah. Mm. I think literally church, I was called my, just through that church that I went to. <laughs> Shout out to church. <laughs> you might know where I went to. Sorry. I thought it was a social club. It, yeah, it is. It, it, that's what I'm saying. It's I stopped like, going to the semi facts. I used to teach Sunday school with my two to four year old class, my little cherubs. Oh, nice. Yeah, I miss, that's the thing I miss the most actually about London, mm. those two to four year old children. Mm. But I used to go for that and go about my own day. I stopped going to like the sermon because it's a motivational speech mm. i feel like you pay for a motivational host, yeah, speech a that's my that that's week. my opinion mm. um so i hear you on that yeah yeah and and would have you gone to church in nigeria yeah um so by the time i came to nigeria i wasn't really like uh 
Christian in inverted commas anymore. Mm. I'd kind of gone down the whole like Hebrew, Israelite, Judaism. Oh, yeah, true. However, uh, I have tried three churches and I tried youth once because I felt, okay, look, if it's young people running it, mm. maybe that might help the situation. <laughs> it was co- it was copy and paste of the older generation with just younger people. I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm good. I, I, I went... <laughs> so yeah, I was what just happened? thinking about how to how to position this thing. So anyway, no, there's one time I went to a church uh, in, in Lagos. Mm-hmm. Somebody invited me. Mm-hmm. I went to the church, and there was just people. It was like a mating. Um, oh, mating like yeah, like everyone trying to find husband and wives. Yeah, everyone was trying to look the best. It was literally that nobody was there to praise God. Like people were praising yeah. God, mm-hmm. but. They were opening eyes like this. Yeah, that's what my church is like in London. And I just can't yeah. do that. I, I mean, I just I came there <laughs> to praise God. Like, oh, really? You know what I'm saying? No, no, I, I was really trying Dr. to take this P. shit seriously. You know? I was of God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> of God. God. <laughs> I was trying to be of God. and I, I really, really be of God. I was taking it seriously. Oh, boy. And then obviously there were just different looks. People coming to me after saying, hey, come to this thing, come to that thing. And and the they're handshakes. very friendly here in church, though. Yeah. They do. I, I did rate that actually. I made a business connection within five minutes. It's actually, it's nice. Yeah. It's very nice. So there's obviously different different ways, but obviously there's still. I'm still trying to find. There's some churches that are looking good right now. That I'm exploring. I'm so good. I'm I'm I'm, I'm really okay. On it. Okay. No, I use YouTube. I, YouTube is actually one of the best. I like hearing debates. And I've, one of my one of my uncles is actually a pastor, and we have an online church. So every Sunday we just get on it later. I can't just... do the church. I can't listen to one person talking continuously. Mm. For me, I listen to like these. There's these American guys. Fam, the way that man know the Bible, yeah, is different. But anyways, they will literally do like four hour debates on topics mm. on the word. Mm. And it's interaction from live chat, interaction nice. from people. If you go on like Brother Berean's channel, one of my favorite, and Dante mm. Fortson as well. So I prefer that because you can, it's interactive. Mm. With church, you just listen to one person give you a speech for like 30 well, minutes. Yeah. You, why would you directive. not be checking out the booty that's walking yeah, on the yeah, aisle? Or not? Like, it's, not, it's not engaging. Not interactive. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, interactive. At, at, least, yeah. at least let the people in the congregation put their hand up to ask a question and do the mic. Have mm. question time. How come churches don't have 10 minutes of that question so time at the end? It's so interesting. It feels cultish so, if it's yeah, not like that. Yeah, that's why yeah. I stepped back. It was because I noticed this thing, yeah. It, it's not that the interest is not there. Everybody mm. craves spirituality. We're spiritual beings. But if they're not being fulfilled, mm. they're going to like find it's, it somewhere yeah. else. Apart from that, I mean, what else do you miss from London though? Like overall? Oh boy, LDN. Hmm. Hmm. So I miss hearing London man's voice. Really? <laughs> the deep, you know, you, the want, deep you, you, want, you know when you pick up the phone like, yo, what are you saying? Yeah, <laughs> I miss that. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing Shalewa. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's give you a name. I want to hear, I want to hear, I want to hear, you know, yo, yo, we, you know? Okay. I missed cool. that, but okay, anyways, that was that was a joke, partially. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I miss racing, okay? I miss driving my baby up and down on the roads, meeting M1. Mandem at the traffic Traffic lights, as in like, fam, I can't even say too much on the pod, but everyone that knows me, that was, I miss driving around London. Like, and then I miss, um, uh, one of my family members in particular. Um, Mm. one of them, one of them, I miss them. And aside from that, I miss my friends. Mm. I'm not going to lie. Um, definitely miss my friends. In fact, if I could transport my London friends to Nigeria, yeah. I think I'd be a bit more sane. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I get you. I, I think that's what kind of kind of the whole point of this whole stuff is like, let's try and get more people coming down. But facts. because there's opportunities for them. There's obviously facts, like, facts, facts, yeah. you know what I mean, there's a community they can tap into now. They yeah, can feel safe. To... We show them ways to kind of move around. But um, all, another thing I was going to say is like, so when you were driving around London, what kind of spots were you like? What was your, mm. what was okay. your thing? Fam, there was one year in my life, yeah, I went out 51 weekends out of 52. That's when I knew that like, I need to calm the... F- I, you know when you got Who that... Who do best- you think you were? Like, you were in the city? Up and down, because at the end of the day... You're free. Nothing holds you back in London, right? Mm. You ain't got to worry about no checkpoint. You ain't got to mm. worry about pothole. You ain't got to worry about, okay, there's potholes. For real. There's potholes. There's potholes, but not like Lagos potholes. There's <laughs> like one, like one well in the middle of the road. <laughs> Even today, I was just dodging bare potholes. I'm thinking, now nah, I'm trying to boom no, you, this you did, you, did, you, did, <laughs> you have to memorize them on the road, actually. Yeah. You did good, yeah. So, like, um, where was I going? So, fam, the, when you when you break down London social life, it mm. falls into three bra- brackets, yeah. It's the bar slash the club. Mm. It's the apartment parties. Mm-hmm. Or, like, what is it? Park have you ever gay crashed the party? 
Oh, fam, you need it's my driving, man. You, you see when I'm driving, man, yeah, don't pull yeah. up on the traffic light, like, yo, come man to this say, party. Yo, don't issue about you on the traffic light to the party. Yeah. Nah, I miss all that. Um, gay crashing, though. Oh, yeah. You know when you're having an apartment party in the mm. same building and then there's another one? Okay. So you, sometimes you wander into the other one. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's happened, I think. What about you? Yeah, I've pulled up in a party in Shoreditch one time. Yeah. Um, me and my boy just were driving through because oh, we used to just go to Shoreditch and just cause hey, havoc, man. Really? Anyways, long, long story short, we had a situation that day. But anyways, sorted it out. Yeah. Got back in the car and then we were driving uh, just past Box Park. And there's a road like, before you get to Shoreditch, Shoreditch Soil House. Yeah. And you keep going straight down. There's someone that having a party. So, I miss those those private member clubs. Yeah, so. yeah nice and nice. Yeah, anyways, nice. we pulled out and then we stopped outside. So we just, oh yeah, then guess who we saw? Lil Sims. Oh, yeah, the, so she, she, yeah, the rapper, yeah, yeah, the rapper, yeah. So she was out there, she was just chilling, X, Y, Z. Yeah, my boy was there, and there were a couple of other shenanigans mm-hmm. there. We were just talking, and then next minute, it was like, oh, we're going to this party upstairs. Yeah, we got to the party upstairs. Even K was there. You okay, know, Kay, yeah, so yeah. Then we got to the party there. And then you know when you just walk into the party, you're like every man lives on the hallway, they're just like, oh. just like standing there. <laughs> <laughs> Just drinking the same alcohol, London, looking at just there, nah, looking at the spot. You know. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just funny man, man. You know, man, man. You know, man, man. You know, just, just funny bear man out your grace. <laughs> I miss London, London. Yeah, when you were with certain guys, you can't go parties in certain areas, I, boy. I'm telling you, just even just the just logistics bare looking, of knowing which group of guys is, is at the there, party. That's you know a big saying? thing in London. Yeah, so you have to ask questions. Okay, who's there? Yeah, right? these man from this area. Nigeria's this. not like that. No, no, no. Just, oh, everyone's just cool. You can go to uh, guys can go to a motive yeah. with other guys there. Really? No issue. Here. There's times with where I go to party and let's say Westman's is there, I just don't even want to go. Yeah, from. yeah, no, yeah. That happened a, a lot. Because obviously we're lot. different. Like if we if we go to a party from if we're from South and we're going to party and it's like Westman is there, the energy is different. Mm. So obviously we're no chains, nothing, just like hooded mm. or just all black. Yeah, shout out to then, my Northwest and West niggas, but yeah, and then you just go to a party and the niggas just bare flossy and yeah, like yeah. normally we rub them. <laughs> Let's just, but I'm not part. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not part. That's it anymore. But anyways, let's like, if you see the realness you know today, boy. If you, if you see, obviously, if you see, if you see, if you see, man, them and obviously like change the Xbox. They obviously, you know, he's not from South in it. Like he's telling me, listen, I'm open for the get for taken. <laughs> <laughs> So no, I'm gonna, I need to go. <laughs> anyway, long story short, yeah, it's just we don't want to go to those kind of stuff in it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Mum said open for tickets. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but why are you, why are you out no. here with your chain and shit just oh outside, Oh my bro? days, that's not what we do anyway, in North West, boy. Yeah, but anyways, long story short, so that we got there and it was just a vibe, but there was no, it was, there was no West Monday, it was you, East and South Did man. you used to be a lot um, at parties that got locked off? Because you know, it's not a thing here for parties to get locked off, but nah, it's a big thing in London. Big, because I don't know, this is, that's why I never, after a while I never hosted the parties anymore, because yes, after try, a point it was just everything locked, locked off. right? Off. And it was just pissing me because you spend bare money on alcohol, you invite your friends, like everyone's getting ready, and yeah, it's like yeah, party and getting yeah. locked off. So yeah. after a while I never really hosted the parties anymore. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It just like, it just wasn't really feeling it, because literally after a while, then Feds was like, you know, that's the issue. You know, your, your your names with Fez Fez yeah. knows your name and you're just like no 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 why does the police know your name yeah all that kind of stuff is just like nah they just the stress was too much mm-hmm. um, and then just kept it kept it civil just invite people out to a spot yeah then lucky for me my friend was like hosting party then so we just like, oh, yeah like, the boy. games nights and things I think that, that's what I enjoy the most even in Lagos that's the only thing I really enjoy the games night because yeah, you get to speak to people you know the games night thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. When I first when I first came, I liked it, but then I realized everybody's low quality. I'm not trying to go. To, sorry, sorry, Lagos fans here, yeah, but there's a lot of low quality people. Really, yeah. I think it's the ones you're going to. Oh, maybe, maybe it's, it's it's, you, you have to really to, check yeah. who and where you're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, when someone invited me to another games, I'm just thinking, bruv. Yeah, I think yeah, it, it's all about Give me details. Who, yeah, like oh, you know what? Even like, the location alone will let you know half the story. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So, anyways, long story short, I just stopped going to those stuff, man. But yeah. obviously, if you like, if that's what you like, you can do it. I it's, prefer it for the club, man. Yeah. Because the club is the same old thing all the time. The club is the same old thing all the time. Uh, it depends on who you go out with as well. If you have a yeah. nice section and you have good people, people around, lit, networking, yeah. yeah, just good. Like, um, yeah, just it's just a, it's just a vibe. Like, but most of the times, though, when I 
go to these things. It's only birthday situations. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, just to be there every I'm day. I'm not leaving my house now. unless it's your birthday. And yeah. even then, when you man are going to the club, I'm going home. Mm. I'm just over. I think everything's in phases, right? Mm. I'm doing the phase where I'm just like not in the mood for that. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a vibe. But no, it's good. Um, but another thing I miss in London is just like, you know, when you're, just, you're driving through the city and there's just like nice lights, you like, Knights Bridge or your 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 yeah just, I like I mean yeah I like that you know what I'm yeah saying? driving through yeah Holborn and things like that on your way yeah, home yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, did you go to yeah. Sway in Holborn have you been to Sway oh some of these places I don't I probably not maybe by maybe by um that's another thing with me mm. I can go to venues but I wouldn't know the name there's another spot called Cunabara did you go to that see I would no I don't think so it's like a Mexican spot it's actually quite sick. yeah no I've definitely not been to that yeah, yeah. that's a vibe that's a vibe okay so where did I used to go to. That's a good question. Yeah. I feel like it's. I feel like. I feel like. Oh my gosh! Do you know where I had the best night? I should. Right. Even, I shouldn't even be saying this right now. <laughs> yeah, wait, yeah. Do you know where I had the best night wait, wait. out in London? Wait. Fam, yeah. Me and my girl were like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should. Okay. You, should you, go, you should know better. You should know it's going in a different direction. Than okay, that, but go, definitely go. not Lewis. Right, let's get over direction. Then. So yeah, me and my girl, like we used to just kind of, especially um, what's that website? Was it Shubs or something? When you just kind of check like what's yeah, on, yeah, what's yeah, on that's where the black events are. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. for the black events. That's another thing in London. You have to actually find where black people are yeah, that great. night yeah, at yeah. The, and where most of them are because you can get to some black events and it's scanty. It's scanty. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's good ones though. So um, so we're like, okay, cool. We, we're feeling to go out. Where should we do? So I was on Shubs yeah, and I sent her. It was Chocolate City was on. So I sent it, I sent it to her and I was like, hmm. let's run this, yeah. Hmm. I sent it as a joke. And everybody was, was My like, girl was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> nah, you went to Chocolate City. This was at Spearmint Rhino, I think in Leicester yeah, Square. I heard like that. Yeah. yeah, let me tell you something. It was not what I expected it really? to be. Really? It was popping. First of all, the club was actually nice. I love, I'm a carpet person. Mm. You know, that's one thing I'm, I love about, I miss about London too. Carpets. Having carpeted home, especially yeah. like cream, nice, luxury, thick carpet mm. throughout the house. So this is a club, a strip club that has carpet in it. Mm. And that also adds value Add to the touch. environment. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not like dirty, it's going to be for sticky. And, you know, that's sticky f- that's ah. why I don't like going out in London, especially that with that shortage. The reason why I don't go to shortage is because it's dirty. Room, room. <laughs> That's even too much. <laughs> but literally, even I went to somewhere recently when I visited um earlier this year, that's my issue with London. Mm. It's like it's so dingy. Like, why have I got mm. a, the street has chewing gum inside the road? By the time someone mm. spills their like, JD and Coke is sticky on the floor and no one coming to clean it up after. So I, feel, yeah, I don't I feel, like yeah. that whole kind of, you know. So when I saw Spearmint Rhino now, classy, you know, I was like, okay, cool. Getting, you know, nice vibes. Now, um, I got a good seat as well, directly mm-hmm. front Opposite. from the stage. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that was nice. And then, oh my days, yeah. Let me tell you something. You know how like we feel like men are visual creatures, mm. and like women are not visual creatures. You are visual. Women that day. are visual creatures. Really. There was like three hundred women and maybe like two gay men, like in the in the venue. Yeah, they were going crazy really these men like would do their thing they would bring some girls on stage they even yeah well i think one of them tried to come on stage okay no one of them he was so good looking he came directly in front of me and all the girls are like go 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 i was like no 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 because you're not allowed phones but you know no, people are sneaky. This is mad. it was no let me tell you something it was mad it was the best night out up yeah. until today. It's even her birthday today. Shout out to like Holania. It was it was literally the best day out in in London. No, so the, when you walked in, yeah, you just know that that was you knew the situation before you walked in. Yeah. Well, when I heard Chocolate City, you know Chocolate City, we used to go. We just knew it was men dancing on stage, mm. maybe unclad, but you know, <laughs> we, you don't really know the full picture. So like, I just thought it was a joke. So I've never been to something like that. I have no, probably never go in my life. Yeah, well, you I should. Know. Well, you suspect if you did. <laughs> 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 but, but, so like what what what, did what happened yeah. so then like yeah so we all lining up and it's literally a show so like they rotate the guy so the guy will come on and he'll just like i don't want to say i don't want to say um i don't want to say play it with himself <laughs> I mean like honestly it's not everyday business yeah. but like he literally um would and it, the thing the things were what, okay basically the things were huge in it it was like the size of the mic nah. <laughs> it was 
like huge. Then they, I remember one had the Jamaican flag and they would just dance, bring girls on, carry mm. the girls over the head. Like obviously they, these are like really, really fit um, black men mm. and um, go around in the crowds and stuff like that. So that was it. But I mean, this was like three years ago, I'm sure now already, almost up to three, almost right. three years ago, yeah. but it was so entertaining. You know, I've never been again since, mm. um, but it was so entertaining. Have you been out in Soho? Have you gone to some spots in Soho? Mm, I'm always questionable when someone sends me a dress to Soho because really? I, anything, I don't really know what I... Yeah, <laughs> I know what you're saying. So but anything never, wrong in Soho, isn't it? I mean, like, I'm, I mean, like, yeah, the truth of the matter is, I'll be honest, I have been everywhere, mm. but my memory cannot tell me exactly the spots on mm. things or, unless I kind of remember the person I'm with and then the memory but I've definitely been out there because I know I put it in my dress but I also know the, the sentiment I have when I see mm. Soho I'm like okay it's a bit of a yeah a, a, a sticky one um but what I mean most of the best nights in London you're with your friends in an mm. apartment house party thing. wait did you do did you do those um 16 plus parties oh my gosh <laughs> Shah, Haro, we used to do them 16 plus raves. Really? Yes. Yeah, DJ, Ar- DJ Ironic used to perform yeah, at them. Yeah. yeah, remember, yeah. Like, it used to be BBK, Skepta, yes. it's the lot of stuff there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I used to, oh, there was even one time I went to the dubstep side of life. Oh, really? Really? I, in, you, I like got dubstep, UCR though. under the radar. Yeah. yeah. It used to be 16 plus. Yeah. And then we used to, like, it used to be like 3,000, 4,000, 16 plus thing. kids. Just raving. What's that thing in Hertfordshire that everyone used to go to? Is it start with B or something? Liquidity. Or something house. Ah. Uh, oh, there was something house. There was a rave that used to happen in like in like Hertfordshire mm. that um it was sixteen plus. Well, really, yeah. yeah, that we used to go to. I can't remember the name anymore. Um, but then uni changed the game. Yeah, because that's when all my yeah. guys, that's when my rappers started coming through Fecky gigs, always to come and perform. That's when I'm like, okay, cool. Now I can actually start getting like proper. You know, yeah. black artists that you'd want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you come didn't really to change uni. the game, yeah, yeah. Because that we used to get shit music before back in the day. Mm-hmm. I remember when, like, you know, like some unis you go to, yeah, it's just like half. Like, there's a lot of white people in those unis. Yeah, so, so what you, was all you get is just like it's just like a white party. Oh, but Facts. you know what? Yeah, because uh, I went to Leicester, and there's this rave. Right? I used to call it Bunkers. Okay. So basically, yeah. It's like a bar crawl. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those days, I can never. <laughs> you knew we had stamina, you know. <laughs> no, no, you don't know. You've been out every night for like we weeks. We had fam stamina. Just weeks. It's like, why are you going out every night for weeks? But like, the funny thing is, sense. I'm not even going to deny it. I was very antisocial at uni, so I didn't mm. go out that much. Mm. I was very antisocial at uni. Mm. Very. In fact, the only people I was were you, friends with. Were you, were you, you study a lot then? Um, eventually mm. <laughs> so i was so funny so basically i did economics and finance mm. but my whole of first year i used to stay on science direct reading psychiatry and psychology academic yeah, yeah, papers yeah, nice. so that's kind of what distracted me from my own degree okay so by the second year i had to wake up and be like okay look rich you, you chose the subject so let's focus, <laughs> focus on yeah this. yeah so that's when it started um yeah. but then yeah it wasn't the studying that was making me antisocial i just think it was uh life mm. A point you made there was there was black people there but it was, i went to southampton there wasn't um so it was kind of mixed mm. um mm, okay, okay yeah, yeah so yeah, that yeah. had another factor to play because mm. people that enjoyed uni are the up north people like mm. you nottingham manny yeah, Bram. Yeah, 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 like, you had yeah, all yeah. them cities leeds sheffield all of you man could we used to have people come from london today to party yeah of course like, that was uni was normal thing. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 i think that was life isn't it we used to visit each other yeah, yeah, like um dope. at uni so you yeah, and you used to you you know about this more than anyone. Now you know what I don't even want to talk about that part of my life anymore. Oh. You know why? Because it's like I've grown past that stage, but mm-hmm. it's fun to reminisce. You know, saying like mm-hmm. okay, you know what we can always talk about like mm-hmm. fun we do, but not specifics. But yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was good times. It was good times. Have you ever have you ever like traveled for like love? I've never been in love, sir. So next question. No, like, like, have you ever been flew out? That's what I meant. I've never been <laughs> in love. Next question. No. <laughs> Screw. Screw. No, because no, no, obviously, like, people fly to to come to, like, uni. And, mm-hmm. uh, and we, mm-hmm. I remember times where people get to come to uni mm-hmm. to buy. Mm-hmm. Both, like, coaches, but obviously trains. People come to different places. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it was... <laughs> it was <laughs> you know, you know, if you're... You know, at uni, yeah, 
the guys who are actually making the stuff go around with promoters. Promoters of uni race? Yeah. Were, were uni students promoters of uni race, by the way? Yeah. We oh, were. okay. Okay. I'm glad <laughs> I actually never knew how it worked. Mm, nah. Shit. We saw some bank, man. We okay. Saw some bank. That's good. And the, the issue, the issue, the thing, not really the issue, but it's like, we were so inexperienced. Yeah. To the point that we just blew it all, man. That is something at uni, yeah. I see all them people that are banging. <laughs> <laughs> banging M and everything. <laughs> And making money I'm and questionable, you, that questionable that money, uni, yeah, it oh, didn't yeah. last. It did not last. <laughs> this is bare gums, whips. Literally, f- second year, uni, I was 20, 21, 21, 22. Had the baddest beam at the time. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, no jokes. Mm-hmm. I had, it was, it was like literally, I know to have that in uni. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, different. Mm-hmm. Even when I come back to ends, like, bro, you meant to go to uni, be you know, like students, you have you meant to have no money. Yeah, <laughs> grinding. Mm-hmm. The only thing I did that was good that made me pass and really do well was like I was very close friends with my lecturers. Yeah, so I, yeah, I, started like, I kept doing it one hundred with them. Yeah, so meet up after after the class, go for drink, go for yeah. dinner, sit down, talk about the work because we have that relationship with them. I never wanted to let them down. Mm, that's very good. You understand what I'm saying? That's so good advice. Actually, they helped me. For the new they helped me accountable. I held them accountable as well to make sure so you. This is you undergrad, yeah. As well. Yeah, undergrad. That's very smart. And after that, that's what made me get opportunities for research and all that stuff as well. So yeah, like advice is that I think if you're kind of doing anything, to think about the external effect, the relationship rather Facts. than just the actual thing. Uh, yeah, I think your lecturers should know you. I started doing that end of second to third year. Mm. When I found my interest, like I was interested in behavioural fi- finance and mm. all, I used to go and sit and talk about that nice. in the room with the lecturers and other topics. So yeah, 100%. Mm. And also, they sign off on things for you. Yeah. So a lot of the time I went to visit them because of things, um, opportunities that they needed to kind of sign off, give references for. So yeah, yeah especially I, I your got, masters. I got, I, yeah. got, I got paid by the uni at, yeah. at the same point of time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they were just, they're doing some research. Oh, you want to help us? And they like, yeah, yeah, come on, do that. Did you have beef at your uni? Because like, what one thing at, one thing at uni was a lot of men used to like come and recreate themselves. Some people were acting like they were El Chapo when they got to uni and no, stuff. No, no, no. So weren't... basically we used to, we had beef with London man. Okay. Obviously I'm from London, but like proper London man that actually were doing stuff in London. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They used to come to where we were to do stuff in it. Okay. And then... We had like brave beef as well, like where where this promoter versus that promoter. Okay. So there was beef there. There was, there was just beef, but it wasn't like serious. But it was serious because they got to a point in time where Leicester became hot. Mm. You understand? Where every man wanted to be there doing events because obviously it was hot for events. Yeah. Every man wanted to be there doing their thing because people are going there to do stuff. So they and they mm-hmm. kind of uh, do their thing as well. So there was locals as well, beef with the locals. Oh, really? Yeah, because the locals wanted to, to get their things as well. So okay. there was just a lot going on. Um, yeah. I wasn't really involved in that kind of stuff. But obviously, like, people that I knew, I saw mm-hmm. stuff that was getting done. Um, yeah. But is, you know, is that the kind of beef you're talking about? You know, yeah, definitely. Because it was obviously, you know, there's always beef. You know what? You know what? I was mm. black <laughs> There's always beef. That's there's really London always, here. That's yeah, what, there's no much beef, you know. That's what things get locked off in London. There's mm. beef, you know, or being rowdy. But like, yeah, here there's no... That's what I said earlier, that Nigerian men aren't militant like that. Mm. Nigerian men are just on kind of like spreading their sperm everywhere. They're not really on like, you know, Defending the beef the, and like yeah. the stuff like that. So, but funny enough, if you look at it now, uni was 10 years, a whole decade ago. That's a long time Literally. ago. Did you, did you feel like you learned what you needed to learn from it? No, if I could go back in time, I'd actually change my degree. Okay. Economics and finance, something you can teach yourself easy. So mm. I would have done computer science instead. Mm, yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm trying to imagine uni in Nigeria, though. Like, do you think it's going to be a similar experience? Hey, oh boy, God, when I thank they, you so they're going to keep you having strikes. You see, God, let's give a special thanks and prayer to God that I can go to uni in Nigeria. The stories I've heard, them man sleeping on the floor, 20, 30 men in one room, most of them on the floor. And the bunk bed situation. Nah, that's wild. We all had our own rooms. Never shared a room. Yeah, for real. And I had my own apartment in uni. I yeah. never shared, I even shared an apartment in second and third year with anybody. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that whole living situation, you know me, I can't even see an ant on our, I'll be screaming. Yeah. Imagine like, oh, that's, that's actually hard because I, I, I'm thinking about boarding school in Nigeria. People still live that way down to university. 
Yeah, see. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a bit. I'm, so, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, shout out, to, shout out to them, man. Yeah, shout out to them, man. But another thing is, that's one aspect I wouldn't survive. Mm. Then the strike, like you mentioned. The strike situation is Very bad. sad. Because very like that's sad. like someone delaying someone's life because you, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? That is so, that's the one thing that really bothers me. And even this whole kind of ASU strike going on right now, where they're saying professors get paid like, is it 400K or something ridiculous? A month? No. For what? 400k for what? No, they get paid a year, on a yearly basis. 400k. They, they, they get paid, it's really minimal. Hmm. We need to fact check it. But Shout out to the Nigerian professors. Though. Yeah, so. You are holding it down for the kids. Which is just, it's just sad. I think I think it's, I remember it's like a 1 million a year. So anyways. Then, that's why they don't give a, they don't care. They don't care. Yeah, but the, problem, the problem is they do care, which is why they're striking because they're like, yo, come oh, on, yeah. man. Oh, no, 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 but for the money though. They're striking for the money. They don't care about the kids. I, I hear I heard a story. Listen, let me tell you something. My, 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 one of my sister went to school in Nigeria, yeah. She's told me like when the professor at let's say he's teaching at nine o'clock and it starts at nine o'clock, right? He walks there and he just writes on the board of everything he wants to talk about. Right, 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 right. Talk, 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 right. It doesn't care if you're taking it in. And if, as soon as the time is done, he drops the the, the chalk or whatever and I walk out the classroom. You know, if it's your it's your choice to learn what he had to say, but they don't really give two shits. Yeah, this country is hard, boy. So imagine that you're, these are these are the people that are going to be the future of tomorrow, and then that's the kind of quality dedication they get. Yeah, because the only ones that succeed are the ones that teach. Because I'm teach with me, yeah. I was fully self taught. Like I could never listen in class throughout. During my A levels, I went to the study room. I didn't. I used to not go to lessons, and mm. I would go to the study room to teach myself my mm. courses. Uni was the same thing. Like I have that nature, but how many people have that? Yeah. It's, it's, so if you've got someone just writing on the board. And you know it's tough. No, no one cares. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a bit peak, but yeah, I, I'm. I don't. I don't think I miss London to live. Mm. I'll be honest, but I definitely miss certain vibes of it. Mm. And it's a core, like it literally created like who I am. So mm. there will always be that appreciation for it. But the society is just too constricted for me, mm. and that's the problem. So, so.